Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're going to start off with the two EVE missions that we left off with and so here is the Gilly Water Fountain and we also have the visual surveys on on EVE to do using our two drones and so that's got to be the toughest one. I would just need to get the Gilly Water Fountain situated. That This doesn't have a contract associated with it. So, yeah, we're not going to get any bonus here. We just need this done. And so it'll be ready to go to refuel various missions to EVE in the future. Or particularly to Gilly. And so, yep, that's the plan. And the first thing I'm going to do is some creative plotting to get this in to a rendezvous with Gilly. And I don't know how long that'll take, but our other mission is uh, safely in orbit around EVE waiting for us there it is the EVE science drone mission um, yeah uh, I mean one way or another we're gonna have to wait for stuff to I mean right now they do look that it looks like the locations are under its orbit sort of but let's take care of this first since uh, that is in a non-volatile situation whereas this uh, takes a little bit of timing okay and uh, yep I'll see you once I get this plotted okay so what we have here is first uh, adjustment to the inclination at uh, 54 meters per second bringing it down from its 3.7 degrees to about 0.3 degrees and then it's gonna come around and it's gonna do another burn at periapsis and that's gonna cost I think it was 70 odd degrees here uh, I mean 70 odd meters per second there we go uh, 74 meters per second and then it's got to come around and hit Gilly there. Gilly Periapsis planned 46 kilometers and that's in three days. So let's take care of this and then we'll finish this mission and then we'll go on to the drones. Okay, very good. And then the next maneuver. Okay, here we go for a rendezvous burn. Okay, 40 kilometer periapsis. Let's go around and get to it. Add SY change alarm. Looking good so far. The question is whether we have enough fuel to slow down once we get to Gilly. We don't have much time to do it. We're going to have uh, six minutes to match orbits with Gilly, which means basically a real burn to turn our orbit like this and then maybe expand it out a little bit. We've only got 556 meters per second here in this stage, and then it's all up to the lander stage itself. Now, it can refuel itself. It was designed to refuel itself, but that might be dicey. It's got the, the carbonite miner. Landing on Gilly doesn't take too much, but we still need some. Okay. Okay. How much will it take? That's what we all want to know. Uh, well, a bit more than I would have liked, but that's actually acceptable considering we can still land on Gilly. And I'm going to land this first, and we've got, we are going to start the drilling out to verify that that all works. Okay. Let's have a little uh, resource scanner. I'm just going to start it now. Okay, coming close to the end of this stage. Alright, and but we'll go to full speed and stage and ignition. Well, we are at a sub-optimal height for the detection array. I don't know how bad that'll be, but uh, it's not really easy to get to an optimal height around around Gilly. And I think in this version, it is not the case that there is stuff all over the all over the planet or moon. I'll have to try and get into a higher orbit or as high as possible so let me stop it there. Try and get to an optimal orbit. 
So maybe 100 kilometers will do. I don't know if we can get to 100 by 100. Well, this little uh, small map shows a 6.1 here. I wonder, 6.1 of what? Right there. Uh, when I hover over it, it doesn't quite say. I don't know, it says 6.7 of something. Doesn't say anything there. Carbonite uh, doesn't say anything. We're about at Apoapsis. Let me try and get into the desired orbit. Okay, that's too much. So we'll just get a little bit lower than that. Okay, hopefully that's stable enough. 87 by 110. Uh, scan sat altitude is ideal. So that's good. Let's go to the big map. Oh, this is Eve. That's why. Ah, uh, come on. Gilly. There we go. That's better. Sort of. At least it shows my orbit. It's not showing much else, though. Says there's a... Uh, oh, there we go. A little bit of carbonite there. Okay, now, we're, now we've got stuff showing up. So it seems like we're going to be coming up on a belt of reasonable concentration of carbonite here. But I want to see where the water is as well. Okay, I, I think I'm detecting a flaw in our plan. It would seem that Gilly is totally devoid of water. Is this correct? In which case, we have a bit of a problem with our Gilly water fountain. It is going to be a very dry water fountain. Yep, I'm not seeing any indication of gilly water. At least on the passes we have done. It could be at the poles. We're not covering the poles at this inclination. But uh, I guess let's land this and uh, check that the carbonite extraction works. That at least will allow us to transfer to something else later on. Currently on the dark side of the planet. Maybe we should aim for something around here. Probably the daylight side over there. Well, let's see. I'm gonna have Mechjeb help out here. Let's assume that I want to land... Okay, we're, we're on this orbit, I think. And I want to land uh, here, where it's 3%. That looks like uh, 40 degrees south, 170 west. 40 south, 170 west. No, that's still firmly on the nighttime side. Seems like we want, need to pick something opposite of that. Um, I guess we haven't flown over... No, we must have flown over the bright side at some point, but maybe not at a good altitude. Let's see. Let's, let's go for full orbit here, and then decide. Oh, also, Gilly is rotating much faster than we're actually orbiting. That sort of complicates the whole scanning thing, doesn't it? And picking a location. Oh. It didn't scan these locations? That's a bit frustrating. Uh, maybe over here is now in daylight. Let's see. Um... 40 north, 130, let's say. 40 north, 130 west. Let's see if that's in daylight right now. And try and go straight down. Eh, not really. Let's just make a landing. We don't have... We're not that short. I just want to test its ability to do some drilling. It looks like carbonite is all over the place. 
says the landing prediction is there. That'll be interesting. Um, that's not too far off from there. Uh, hold on. Let's try and get that blue marker to hit the red marker. See if that works out at all. That's pretty close. Not exactly right, but pretty close. Okay, let's see if this works out. With this orbit, it means that that's going to rotate to the daylight side anyway. But we will monitor the situation closely. Here, at least, Megjeb's landing prediction works. Okie dokie. Gear down. Seems like we're uh, hitting some high terrain, about 6 kilometers in height. Which is good, because then that'll allow us to get out of the time warp, warp restriction zone around Gilly, which is always annoying. Okay, we are in the time warp restriction zone. I am looking at the suicide burn countdown. Uh, okay, auto saving pause. I'll give myself some leeway on that countdown there. Not too much. Okay, shadow sighted. Okay, touchdown. Alright. Well, too bad we don't have a contract. Oh, we've got a little hop though. Yep, too bad we don't have a contract, otherwise this would be tremendously successful. But we have hopped a bit. Oh, let's deploy the drill. Maybe it'll help anchor us. Start carbonite drill. Well, it is extracting carbonite, even though we're sort of not quite on the surface. Okay, very good. So, carbonite extraction has begun. We're gonna start LFO conversion and see if the electric charge can hold us. Well, it filled up with electric charge uh, pretty quickly just now. I don't know where it's getting it from. Oh, I guess the sun quickly rose again. Is that right? Is that what's going on on that horizon? Yeah. Uh, no. That's not the sun. That's the sun. Okay, well, it, uh, I guess it sort of works. But it's gonna take a heck of a long time to fill this up. Okay, uh, I don't want to go too far with this. Uh, let's take a look at our alarms. Well, we're still 30 odd days away from the Dres stuff. Uh, well, we've landed it. We can extract carbonite, but we I, let's try water. But I don't think we can. Let me deploy the drill. Start water drill. Oh, there is water. It's extracting water. Well, even though we didn't detect water, we seem to be able to get water. So I guess we'll just uh, leave that be. I assume I've done the calculations so that we've got enough liquid fuel and oxidizer if we fill this up in order to carry all the water up with us so yep yeah, I'll just leave the one drill working and uh, carbonite extraction working as well and seems like a success to me okay very good quite unexpected but let's turn to the drones okay here we are with the EVE science drones and you can see the location of the sites that we'd like to investigate um, it's possible that just one pass will take care of all of them. We've got two drones to work with. But I think we need to wait for them to come around a bit before we head on in. Uh, taking a look at the altitude requirements. That's something we need to do. Okay. So, the one that we need in flight below 22. Basically the one that the drone will be sacrificed on because 22 kilometers is pretty darn low uh, is is actually this one 
So if we could get one drone to hit this one and that one, that'd be great. Or we need some drone to come at, uh, come and get this one, and then double back and get that one. Otherwise, we should be able to de do these two at a relatively high altitude. It says above 21 kilometers, but I think we can do it at, you know, uh, pretty high in the atmosphere. I'm not sure though. Now remember a side goal of this is to examine the aerodynamics of flying an aircraft around EVE. Because that might be the best way of getting substantial stuff down to the ground and back up again. Depending on how the aerodynamics works with EVE's increased gravity as well. Okay, I think I'll give it one more orbit. That one's pretty close to being on, under our orbit, but I want to start off with this one. So we'll have to sort of make a turn towards that one if that's possible. So after this orbit, uh, once we get to, let's say, Apoapsis, I'll decouple the science drone and then we'll try and aim for these things. I'm going to control from here right now. And decouple. Okay, SAS. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No? Oh, it's because of Smart ASS. Alright. SAS is on. And we're going to activate the engine. Very good. We've got two, almost 2,800 meters per second of Delta V. And the drone is away. Let's get it into the atmosphere, I think. Um... I don't know. I hope that comes around into our into our scope. We'll have to see. I just want to skim the atmosphere. I don't want to get too low into it. Let's say 80 kilometers. I don't know if that'll be enough, but let's do that as a start. Now I'm gonna go prograde. Okay, we are hitting the atmosphere and we need to reorient. Do remember that deadly reentry is installed. We're not getting any new electric charge. The sun is sort of at a bad angle. Could probably tilt a little bit to get some. There we go. Uh, our targets seem further away than I had planned. Activate navigation. Okay, so we've got navigation set to that site. Probably that one would be easier to hit, but that one comes first. Gotta try a sort of shuttle thing. So we're gonna have a little bit of a pitch up orientation. Okay, vertical speed is uh, doing well. This is what I want it to do. I don't want to be accelerating downwards. I want to get some lift, and that's what we're doing. We're getting some lift here. So that's positive. Doesn't look like we needed... Our, we, our controls don't seem to be taxed right now. So that's good. Let me use FAR to help me out here. I want uh, maximum lift to drag ratio. Okay, that's going down again. So about 30 was right. But we are now getting quite suborbital. Now we've got plenty of Delta V to rescue ourselves. I think I'm going to use a little bit of it. I want my vertical speed to be going up right now. Okay, now we've got positive vertical speed. Um, doesn't seem to be doing very good for our periapsis right now though. We 
We are now closer to the targets, but we're pretty far askew. Um, I wonder if we can do... No, we want to roll the other way. So have a turn. We're not getting too much heating, it doesn't seem. Is this actually changing our heading? Well, our inclination's changing. Very little, though. What's our heading? No side slip. That's good. Yes, our heading is changing. Well, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to fly around EVE, but this is how I'm doing it. Just boosting my vertical speed every now and then. Let me get my periapsis to positive territory temporarily. Oh, my target slipped all the way over there, is that right? Oh darn, we're not really hitting it very well. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally missing it. Maybe on the next pass, if I can get back to orbit. Alright, so we're at uh, 144 by 48 and declining. We'll see. We've used about 600 meters, well, about 500 odd meters per second right now. Okay, at apoapsis now. And I don't think I need that low a periapsis, so I'll boost that up. Actually, I think uh, even 85 will work fine. Okay. So let's go around at that and see how that works. Uh, I hope the target will be closer to our orbit this time. Okay, here we go again. It's looking better for an approach. I think uh, this is... Well, they could be quite picky, I don't know. We've got 30 degree pitch. And we're actually over here right now. So that's the down... right here. So that's the downside. We've got a long way to go. Probably went too low on the periapsis, but we'll boost up as necessary. Might take a little bit more delta B than last time. So I've boosted our periapsis up. Uh, so it actually looks like this. Our periapsis is here at 89 kilometers. And uh, boosted it up by angling up like this and getting some lift. And our apoapsis is there, 121 and declining. And our target is right in the middle. Okay, the situation has changed a bit. The apoapsis is coming closer to us now. And the periapsis is now on the other side. We've still got positive vertical acceleration. But we've also got drag. So we're also slowing down. Okay, so we're right in line with our target. You can see right here. Right on it. So the hope is that it doesn't mind if I'm a little bit high because we're probably gonna be above 70 kilometers, we'll see. I'm not gonna boost it up again, I'll just keep going down and then we'll see if we have enough fuel to boost up. All we have to do is boost up one more time into orbit and then we can hit this coming basically straight down. Well, not straight down, otherwise we'll catch too much drag and actually drag seems to be quite potent leading me to believe that flying around EVE might be more difficult than I imagined. Got a lot of drag. I'm going to select the barometer and wait for the indication that we are over the target. Okay, log pressure data. And hopefully transmitting won't take all of our stuff, but 36 science is worth it. Let's go. Okay, good. 36 science added. Did we get the contract fulfillment? Yes, we did. Oh, very good. Very good, very good. Okay, um, let's zero out the roll, and let's get back into orbit. I think that should do the trick. We're on, we're at 88 kilometers already. Okay, very nice. That one is done. We'll come around and try and get this one. I think it might take more than one orbit. Tough to say. I'll wait until I'm at Apoapsis before deciding. Okay, I've boosted it to a full orbit here. I don't know if the next pass will cover the location very well. 
Eve has been rotating very slowly. I think I'm gonna let the probe go around once and hopefully that location will be more decisively underneath. Let's take a let's focus on Eve. The orbit line is I wish we could see the orbit line here. It's for some reason invisible right where we need it. Our probe is there. Of course, uh, this is a one-time only sort of thing because this time we're going to be bring it, bringing it deep into the atmosphere and probably won't be able to recover it. Of course, this is mainly what this was going to be about is trying to see the dynamics, the aerodynamics at uh, lower levels. I guess that's close enough. Okay, I'm going to bring bring it down and we'll see what happens. We don't have to have too low periapsis, so it'll, it'll bring us down alright. Um, that might even be too low. Yeah, I think that's gotta be too low. Let's go back prograde. Let's just aim for 70, I think. I think that'll be alright. We need to be below 20 kilometers, but the drag will take care of that. We're, we're over here right now and we're going to be entering the atmosphere soon. We're not low enough. Oh, we're going up again. Well, let's descend more decisively and hope Eve doesn't burn us up. We're losing the marker. Ah, uh, shucks. Um, well, let's try and fly around and maybe we'll get around to it. I don't know. If I pitch up severely, I, I, I'm not getting in. I, I'm not gonna get in enough. Uh, oh, I'm entering the zone. I'm just not low enough. I'm not gonna get enough drag anyway. I don't think. Leaving the zone. Let's start turning around then. We are losing velocity fast. Wow, wow, it's forcing me to the prograde vector now. Oh boy. Serious aerodynamics now. Basically, once we got below the speed of sound, that was the end of it. I can't control it anymore. Hold on. Maybe I can get going in a correct direction. Okay, uh, looks like I've got it again. Don't know how well it can glide. It loses velocity very quickly thanks to drag. But yeah, that's a long way to go. Let's try that for now. <laughs> Look at the speed bleeding off. Well, this is not a very good angle to glide at. This could take a while if I... Well, uh, let me update you once this thing either gets there or crashes. That'll give me some more leeway to take my time with this. Well, this situation is very interesting. We've got a stable velocity. Well, it's going down a little bit. But uh, our vertical speed is good. We are currently losing altitude. But uh, we are aimed right at the marker for the target. At this speed, it'll take us quite a while to get there, though. I guess... Th um, I might be getting a little bit less done than I expected during this episode. This is going to be a long journey, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to see whether it works, so that's where we are. Alright, um, so I might be gliding for a while here at EVE. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, the wings just ripped off. I just decided to try to use Smart ASS to control it, and uh, we lost the wings. It was going so well, too.
got more Delta V now. But um, yeah, that's a shame. It was so sort of aimed right, and there was a shot, there was a chance, but oh well. Um, I don't know. Can I get the barometer now? No. Uh, I want a low, low altitude reading if possible. Uh, I can't aim at it. Oh, there's the barometer. Now I have to actually get the log pressure data. Okay, that's better. All right, uh, while flying at Eve. Okay, let's transmit that data. Okay, well, so we'll try the other probe. I will get the high reading first, this one, at M5Z2. And then we'll try this whole approach to 6Y6C again. Okay, well, it seems like this doomed drone is over some rough terrain. But definitely terrain and not water. We've got clouds still below us. And when I say not water, I mean whatever liquid fills the oceans of Eve, of course. Well, there's not much chance to control this, but I don't know if we've gotten the barometer reading from the surface yet. Okay, pretty much complete and utter destruction. Alright, let's... oh wait, what's that little piece floating by? Oh, the spontaneous destruction of that. Oh, no scone. Okay. Alright, let's go with the other probe. Well, we might as well deorbit this poodle stage, but it's got to be a little bit unbalanced because of the fact that we only have one of the drones on it. But yeah, we, we don't want to leave this around Eve, so let's bring it down on the several trajectory that the drone will be on. But we don't need to do that right now, because our targets have already passed. So we're going to have to time warp for a while as these targets come around again. or. Uh, I don't want to do it on the nighttime side, so yeah, as they come around again on the daytime side, we'll see. Okay, here we are. We're at Apoapsis, and it looks like the target sector is where we want it to be. So let us retroburn carefully. Now I'll do 85 kilometers again. That's our periapsis there. Should work. And hopefully this thing will deorbit, not sure. But uh, alright, I'm controlling from here. Got plenty of Delta V in here. Sort of a waste. But uh, let's get going. Alright. And same sort of attitude that we had before. Unfortunately, it looks like the textures on this one are backwards. This should be the underside of the wing. But, I guess you can't have everything. Okay, we're a little bit high on this end. Looks like our apoapsis is a bit ahead. I hope that we'll be low enough to fulfill this one. We are in line, so that's good. It's just a matter of altitude. Yeah, we're entering. Log pressure data. Okay. We've collected the data. Let's transmit the zero data. Just for the heck of it. And yep, we got that one. But now once again we have to face the tough one. Which is over here. So we have to get into full orbit because that's obviously not in the right timing. We can't go around once and hit that. So once I get to Apoapsis, uh, no, we need to boost our Apoapsis a little bit. Okay, I'm at Apoapsis again. I've put it into orbit after the previous dip, but now we're going to head back in again. It looks like we're aimed right for this location, hopefully. And uh, I think I'm going to be very decisive about this retro burn. 70 kilometers last time was not enough. Okie dokie. Same pitch again. And let's go around. Well, orbit's coming down pretty drastically. Let me 
get some lift here. We, uh, we're at about 80 kilometers. Okay, we are going to be past Apoapsis here, right there. And this trajectory would look good if if there was no atmosphere, but we know it's going to pull us in like a brick at a certain point. So we're going to lift it back up again. You know, that's, look, that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it like that. And we'll have to rely on some gliding to get there. Okay, we are going down now. We are... 81 kilometers and descending quickly, 140 meters per second. I've reduced the pitch, 20 degrees now. Still trying to turn, using 20 degrees of roll to try and line up with our target. Maybe I should I, I should slow down. Um, let's increase pitch to get a lot of drag. Let's just put our flat side to it. There we go. We're not really slowing down enough. Again, we're overshooting. Oh, it's going up. Okay, that ploy did not work out for me. I want you to go down. I thought I was going to create drag, but it didn't create enough drag. If we don't go too far, then I can turn around and hit it, but I guess we can start rolling for that now. Still quite far off. Not quite as far as last time, but still this isn't going to be any good. We've got more delta V though. Okay, that's causing oscillations, bad oscillations. This is where Smart ASS ripped off the wings, so let me... That's the sort of oscillations that causes that, but I'll take control and manage it myself, I guess. Okay, well, it looks like we're lining up with the target again key now is to manage the speed and attitude so we can actually get there. Current atmospheric density by the way is only 8% of Kerbin normal or Earth normal for that matter. Sea level altitude. We're uh, descending below Mach soon. Yep, going faster has very little reward to it. Just wants to pull you down. I feel a little bit more comfortable above 30 kilometers, actually. It has bad... It has a bad feel to it under 30 kilometers. I mean, literally, it seems like there's a big difference. Well, heading down for it. We need to be below 22 kilometers anyway. We're getting close. Twenty-five kilometers. We've got some buffeting. Twenty-four kilometers. Um <gasps> Oh shoot. Okay, that was bad. Um, Alright, uh, very important I can actually reach the barometer, that's most important. Uh, well, we're, we're going down, uh, we've lost most of our surface horizontal speed, so I don't know if we'll actually get there. We're so close, too. Very close. Just not quite there. Ah, uh, just a little twitch. All right. Well, heck, log pressure data. Hold on. No, oh, transmit whatever that is. I don't know if I, I might have missed the message that we were in the zone. Nope, I didn't. We were not in the zone. So close, yet so far. Well, we still have a lot to perfect in terms of this. Looks like a uh, big risk of losing your wings at an altitude under 25 kilometers or so. Yep. Definitely a problem. 
Now since this is take pressure readings below that height, probably a lander would be the more reasonable thing to do there. But I don't know. I don't know what we gotta send in order to complete this contract. We'll have to think about it. All I know is this didn't work out very well. Maybe if I... Like... Okay, yeah, I can do that. But it's not gonna... Okay. Mm, should have thought of this earlier. Not much effect now. We lose the horizontal velocity way too quickly anyway. Alright, and complete annihilation. Well, I don't know. It, it's it been fun, but uh, on this note, I think I'll conclude this episode. Uh, that was tough stuff. And uh, yeah, a little bit disappointing, but we did get the Gillylander there, and at least we somehow found water even though it didn't show up on the map. So that's a positive. And actually, if we go back to the Space Center, I think we've got plenty of science. Yeah, we got uh, more than 400 science, I think. Uh, not too much by way of funds, but uh, if we take a look at that contract for those, those uh, barometer readings, we will see that, yeah, each one of them gave 206 science. Only 40,000 funds, but 206 science, so that's why we got plenty of science out of it. Okay, so we have made some headway. And next time, it'll be all about Drez. And we, we don't even have a Drez contract. Uh, so, yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. But we will try and tame that wayward, wayward planet and see what we can do with it. All right. So, on that note, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.